You know, this morning's a little different. Um, I had it in my heart to write a letter to the dads of church, which I did. And then, you know, I thought it'd be great for other people to hear that as well. And so as, as a message this morning, I've actually written a letter. And letters are old form. You know, the Bible is actually lots of letters. A lot of the New Testament is actually Paul writing letters to churches. And so I feel like God just encouraged me to write the letter and then speak it out and, and actually just talk about it that this morning as a message. So I'm going to do that and then just pray for dads at the end because this is a special day for dads. And it's a special day for all of us because as our Father in heaven, He loves us as a dad. And the more that we can understand that, then the more confident we'll be in life and things will flow better. So let me just pray before I read this uh, rather long letter. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you are our Father in heaven. And I thank you this morning as we gather around some, some truths and some ideas on fatherhood, that, that you are the Father of fathers and that you are our source and our inspiration. So Lord, come and just uh, fill us with your truth this morning as, as, we, as we explore what it means to be a dad. Thank you, Jesus, for your truth. Amen. Dear dads, happy Father's Day. And there may be others listening to this, kids, wives, single folk. It's good to listen in, for, for you will learn something of what it means to be a dad and to be able to support those who are. But this I write unapologetically to dads. And while some may dispute this, you have one of the toughest and most important jobs in the world. Billy Graham, a widely respected Christian speaker and thinker, said that a good father is one of the most unsung, unappraised, unnoticed, and yet one of the most valuable assets in our society. See, dads, you are expected to have a wide selection of dad jokes up your sleeve at any time. Be sacrificial in your love for others in your family. Provide financially for your family. Do your share of the housework. Expand, grow, and develop a career through study and effort and perseverance. Be the rock, the strong one to your wife and your children, despite pressure inside and out. Be a model of uprightness in the wider community and to be a good bloke to get on with the lads. To be practical around the house and fix things. Good dads out there to hold it together, to hang in there in one piece for the long term. But I know that this is tough, and so does God. And as a father, he gets it. Hurt, grief, loss, he experiences these things, coupled with his unending love for his children. Yet in this open letter, I write to encourage you in three things. Here they are, to fight well, to love unconditionally, and instruct your children with wisdom. And as you pursue these things as a dad, watch how it brings life to the next generation. Watch the people around you grow and flourish and see how it enlarges your own soul. So to number one, fight well. It's a kingdom battle. Men are wired for battle. We rise to a challenge. I don't mean that everything in life is a confrontation. Though some blokes seem to approach life like this, to their own peril. No, I mean to fight well. Pick a battle that is worth fighting. Engage in a war to improve the lives of others. Set a high standard for yourselves. Walk in a manner worthy of God. Now, this is not weak or passive. Rather, it will take great determination and perseverance. So here are some ideas on how to fight well. Number one is be strong and courageous. You're going to need large doses of strength and courage to fulfill the challenge in front of you. I mean, have you ever tried to change a really bad nappy? You know the ones. 
It's brown all the way down the legs on the inside. All the way up the back. It's everywhere. And you think you have it under control by holding two ankles together. But then you drop one ankle and it lands. I mean, it takes great strength and character to hold it together, doesn't it? In those sticky, tricky contexts where men have to be man and rise up and not lose the plot. It means courage to stand up for the welfare of others, to, live, to not live passively. Know that the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You're not alone. There is superhuman strength inside of you for when you need extra strength and courage to fight well. He is with you. It is for discipline that you have to endure. Although none of us really like the thought of hardship or discipline. A father disciplines his children because he loves them, just as our Heavenly Father disciplines us. And when you're going through tough times, it's worth reflecting. Are there things to take away that will hone your character and equip you for your greatest strength in the future? And while it's easy to complain about life's lot, the one who fights well sees opportunity in hardship for their own character. Dads, you will grow through these tough times. So be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men, and be strong. Know the times and the seasons and stay alert. Be the backstop, the one who doesn't quit, the last one standing. The world needs men like you, men who rise, men with gentle strength and an overcoming spirit. So stand firm in the faith. Avoid the temptation to do faith alone. Grow in your faith. Engage in prayer, the word, and building the church. I fear that COVID could make us weak and fearful, content in our own homes, looking after our own domain, because a man's home is his castle, after all, to quote a famous movie. Yet to fight well means to be being counted with men of faith around you who will help you to fight well, be part of the community of the church. And finally, to fight well, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. Refreshingly, I'm not talking about honing your body or working out for this. There's already way too much pressure in men for that regard. It's God's strength you need inside every day. And it's good to know your enemy. Strange as it may sound, may I suggest to you that your enemy is not your toddler, your dog, or even your wife. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Take your stand against the enemy's schemes, for they often masquerade as people problems. I don't mean to blame the devil on everything, but, but be aware that you have an enemy whose sole purpose in life is to steal and kill and destroy. Sometimes the tension you feel, the misunderstandings you have, or the atmosphere in the house is the work of the enemy. Fight well. Fight the right enemy and do it in his strength. But men are not just fighting machines, honed for battle, though occasionally this pops out during adolescence. Men are driven and often undone by love. So right alongside the encouragement to fight well is the call to love unconditionally. And what is this crazy little thing called love? Well, how do I know what love is? There's songs about that. Here is one of the greatest definitions of love that I've ever come across. That love is patient and kind. That love does not envy or boast. Love is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things. It believes all things. It hopes all things. It endures all things. Unconditional love is a high calling, taking a lifetime to master. Yet the rewards of seeing unconditional love flow through you is one of the most fulfilling things on the planet. So, dads, if you're married, 
Start with the person who should be the most dear to you. Love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Not only is this the best parenting advice you'll ever receive, it is the model and example of all pure love. This kind of love is sacrificial in nature. It puts her first. It rescues. It condescends. It steps into a mess, sometimes an emotional mess, but love her. And this kind of love is a verb, a doing word. It's leaving behind your rights and responsibilities and privileges and making someone feel loved and valued. You're going to need some backup for this. So lucky you have a model and an example to follow in the way that God loves us. Love her unconditionally. And then there's the small matter of the potentially small children around you. What are we to make of these creatures known as children? They come out so cute, so adorable. Be careful, it's a trap. It's God's way of endearing your heart to these little ones as they create chaos and change you forever. This again is one of God's schemes for us dads to stop us focusing on our own petty needs and to look beyond. A helpful thing to remember is that, behold, children are a heritage of the Lord. Why does it say behold? It means to see or to recall or to realize, remember. Indeed, they are a gift and they are from God. And what a wonderful privilege is the adventure of child of fatherhood. What a gift and a responsibility to nurture and shape the next generation. Love them unconditionally. And here are some tips on how. Do not exasperate your children so they'll not lose heart. Don't set the bar so high that they'll grow discouraged and see themselves a failure. Don't provoke them to anger. Do we strive for excellence and push and train in diligence? Copy how God did it for us. He set us up for a win, and that not of our own making. It's easy when they're younger, but as they get older, I have found that they get smarter. Quick words of affirmation or a wrestle on the floor don't cut it anymore. Especially when they're bigger than you. Speak words. Believe in them. Be proud of them, no matter what. A kid who knows his dad believes in them is a conduit of love to the next generation. Find new ways as they grow to love them unconditionally. And now, if you think of all this believing in and affirming kids is getting all rather fluffy, a big part of love is instruction. They need more than right words. They need right instruction. In a world that's increasingly postmodern, that is, there are no right paths, just right intentions. Your way is the right way, as long as it doesn't contradict anyone else's idea of what is right. You see, that's not going to work. Our next generation is looking for real answers. There is real truth. There is right and wrong, good and evil. And there are significant biological gender differences. We are not all the same. We should be celebrating uniqueness, not pushing everyone towards sameness. Our children need to be confident in who they are. And they need wisdom to deal with how this world thinks. So teach your children along the way. God's ways should be on your heart. Teach them diligently to your children. Talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. And while there are times of formal instruction, the home is a family, it's, it's not a school. Kids learn in context. So if you see a rainbow, don't just give a technical explanation. Let your child understand who made it, not just how. Take every opportunity for wisdom, unpacking the why. And in this, you will bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord 
while still creating a fun and a warm home. Train up your children in the way they should go. And even when they're old, they will not depart for it. Set them with healthy direction and healthy habits. Teach them to love their Bibles, to pray naturally, and take them to church. Remember that what you model is more powerful than what you say. And give your children the freedom to explore and trust them. Let them make their own mistakes. You can't shelter them forever or do it all for them. The values that you hold dear are the ones that are seen and not heard. The culture within. And though at times they seem like they're not listening or even outwardly rebelling, love them. Win them over with love and kindness and not a war of words. And finally, have this mantra deep in your spirit. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Regardless of how this world changes or the challenges that lie ahead, true peace and happiness come when families commit to serving God for the long haul. And if it seems like yours is not the perfect family, whose is really? Have this in mind. As much as it depends on you, lead your family in serving God. And even if your family doesn't follow you always, take the lead. Be the man. And in conclusion, fight well. Love unconditionally. Be bold enough to instruct the next generation in right paths. Please hear this as a letter of encouragement and not condemnation. Dads, no one has it perfect. And more than occasionally, we need to change or even repent. Yet with God as our strength, we can do this. Let's raise a vibrant, life-giving generation that take the kingdom of God to a whole new level. It's a high call, but worth everything that we can throw at it. Because I see a generation of dads who take their faith seriously, yet are full of life and love and joy. And through this, they, they change the world. What a marvelous adventure we've been called into together. Happy Father's Day.